stand tonight? Did you come to worship the King of Kings? I know it's a rainy Wednesday and it's gloomy, but I've come to give the Lord some praise tonight. Is that you?
into garments. He turned your mourning into dancing. He kept you sheltered from the storm. Amen. Are you thankful for him tonight? Will you just lift your voice? Oh, I search the world. tonight can say that he's glad you, you're glad he turns your grave into a garden amen as they were singing that song i was sitting over thinking you know what 
what looked like a grave at one point in time, I look, I look out and I see a lot of gardens. And the reason is because he turned what looked like a dead situation and he brought life into it. And he turned your grave into a garden. Sometimes, you know, when you see all a dead spot out there in the grass somewhere, it looks like, well, that's, that's all dead grass. That's, that's, ain't nothing gonna grow there. Then all of a sudden, next thing you know, well, here comes a little, a little flower out of nowhere. Or if you're walking down the sidewalk, you, th you see a crack in the ground. In the sidewalk, whatever they, when they make, put the crease in their thing. Well, there's a little flower coming out of the sidewalk. Don't tell me that my God can't do everything. Don't tell me there's a situation too big or small. My God can do anything. He can do the impossible. If he can make that flower come up through the concrete, he can turn your situation a whole 180. Don't tell me my God can't do nothing. If he can die and resurrect in three days, honey, ain't nothing too big. Ain't nothing too small. If he can make those tornadoes come through and not do a whole lot of damage through this area like what could have been done, I thank God yesterday that he had a head of protection upon every single one of us. I'm glad we had the opportunity to come back to his house tonight. We were at work yesterday and sirens started going off. Everybody started acting crazy. Next thing you know, the wind blew. It's an 80 mile an hour wind. We were joking. We were talking, no, it's not going to happen. Next thing you know, here comes the bay door flying through across the warehouse. Flag. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. About took one of our elders at work, about took his head off. I was like, you know what? I'm glad you were out with God. Because you about met him. He's like, well, I'm ready to go. I was like, well, I know you are, but I'm worried about everybody else here. I'm still trying to plant a garden here. I'm still trying to do a work here. But I love the Lord tonight. I mean, who's got a, who can testify that God turned your situation around? I was headed down a dead-end road. I was headed. Hell was fixing to be my home. Sister Brandy, hell was fixing to be my home. But God said, not today. You're mine. I'm turning this around. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. We're going to take up our offering tonight. If you've got an offering, tithes and offering, we're going to take it up right now as Firm Foundation comes to sing for us. Amen. Lord, we come before you tonight, God. We're just thankful, God, for everything that you've done. God, we're just thankful for your love, your protection, God, your support, everything, God, everything that you give to us, God. God, we're unworthy, God, but you love us through it all, God. We thank you, Jesus, God. Now, we ask you, God, to take this tithes and offer, God, to bless you to the further of your kingdom, God. Bless those that have, God, and those who don't, God, they can ne give next time. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Who can give a testimony over the house that God has kept you, that God has redeemed you? Has God changed your name? Has God given you a new direction in your life? Did God bring you out? Did he heal your body? We're going to take an opportunity as a group tonight just to testify a little bit about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. For anyone who's ever felt the mountain of their sins just disappear. For anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their dry their tears for every life that once was empty now finds itself alive and full of songs victory songs then you'll understand the reason for the way the saints of god may carry on when i shall go i'm shouting from a heart that's been washed clean when i run no i'm running from a past that's been reading to a world that might look crazy, there's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. For anyone who knows the hope that keeps him moving on through troubled days. For anyone. darkness into light. There's no way to keep us silent. Every breath's another chance to testify. When I shall know I'm shouting from a heart that's been washed clean. When I run, no, I'm running from a past that's been reading to the world it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. 
That's your testimony. Would you put your hands together? Amen. Would you give the Lord a great hand clap of praise and let your neighbor know? Amen. I'm living the scripture that says, He that son sets the Son is set free is free indeed. If you're thankful, put your hands together again and magnify Him. We love you tonight, Lord. We praise your name. I thank you, Lord. Amen. We give you praise tonight, God. Turn your neighbor and tell him, I'm free in Jesus' name. I'm free in Jesus name. Amen. Find somebody else and tell him, I'm thankful for what the Lord has done for me. 
Amen, amen, amen. Didn't they do a wonderful job this evening? Give them a great big hand. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful job, wonderful job, wonderful job. Amen. We'd like for the elders to come forth tonight. And if you have a need, we want you to come. Amen. And stand before the ministry of this church, praying the prayer of faith, believing God to minister to you, believing the hand of the Lord. Amen. To rest upon you tonight. Amen. I'm thankful for what we feel in the house of the Lord. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, and you're going to hear me say it real often, that where Jesus is, anything can happen. How many believe that tonight? That where Jesus is, anything can transpire. Where Jesus is, nothing. Everyone shout nothing. Nothing is impossible with him. And so if you have a need tonight, just make your way to the front. Come in faith, believing, stand before the ministry of this church. And we want to pray. There's some very important prayer requests we need to bring to your attention tonight. And believing God to move and minister. Amen. Need to pray for Sister Marlene Donovan tonight. Amen. She was in the hospital. Amen. But we're glad to tell you she's home and doing much better. And give the Lord praise for that. Thank the Lord for touching her and ministering to her. Also, want to continue to pray for Sister Alicia McCollum. She's unable to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Want to pray for her. Also, for the Aaron Hasty and Josiah is in need of prayer tonight. And pray for Sister Brenda Phillips. She was in the hospital, but Amen. She went home today, and we thank the Lord for touching her body and ministering to her. We need to pray for Sister Cheryl Elliott this evening. Amen. She is in the hospital. Want to pray that God would touch her. She's having a little bit of trouble. Amen. With her lungs. And so we want to believe that God, Amen, is going to minister. Want to pray for Elder John. He had a procedure. Amen. This week on Monday, I believe it was. And we're glad to tell you that he's home recovering and doing well. And we thank the Lord. Amen. For touching him. Ministering to him. But Aaron Gibbs is in need of prayer. Want to pray for him. Brother Jerry and Sister Rhonda Walker. Brother Randy Withrow. It's in need of prayer. Want to continue to pray for Brother Joe Hose that God would touch him. Sister Alice Castle. Uh, she fell. And so we want to pray that God would touch her. And Brother Dennis Pritt is in the hospital. I visited with him just prior to service. And so we want to pray that God would touch his body. Skip Withrow is in need of prayer. Also want to pray for Deshaun Payne. He has a very special need, and O.G. Williams as well, very special need, Carla Little. I uh, want to pray that God will bring deliverance and healing and ministering to her. also want to continue to pray for Brother Aaron Wright and his family. Many of you know that his grandfather passed away, and uh, that uh, funeral visitation is Friday evening and then funeral on Saturday, amen, at 10 o'clock there um, in Illinois. And so we want to pray and believe that God would strengthen them and help them. I have been on the phone with Brother Aaron each and every day, amen, talking with him and, and checking on him, and, and uh, the Lord is strengthening this family, and the Lord is comforting this family. Let's just give God praise for that, would you? Let's just thank the Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the comforting power of the Lord and the hour of need when we need him the most? And so we want to pray. Amen. I, I believe Brother Jonathan already made mention of it. We had a terrible storm come through here. Amen. I believe it was yesterday, and there's a lot of the saints that able to be here tonight due to the fact of no power. Amen. Others was en route to service. Amen. Coming from a distance and, and the interstate in a certain degree is kind of in lockdown because I believe of a car accident. And so we want to pray whatever's going on in that situation. Pray for families that need a touch of God. Amen. Power would come back on quickly. Can you say amen? Amen. So we want to pray that God will help. Amen. Electrical companies to do what needs to be done. Amen. Many have lost homes. Many, amen, are in dire straits. And so we want to pray for them tonight. Amen. That God will touch and strengthen. The Lord is well aware, amen, of every need, every situation. And so we want to pray tonight, believing God, that God, amen, is going to do that work in the name of the Lord. And so if you have a very special request, would you just raise your hand? Amen. The Lord knows exactly what that need is tonight. And we're going to pray. And we're going to believe with everything in us that God is going to do the work that only He can do. And so would you raise both your hands right now and let's call on the name of the Lord. And let's just thank Him for the touch of the Lord. I feel His presence in this house. I feel His glory in this house. I feel His anointing in this house right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, you're well aware of every situation, every circumstance tonight. God, you're well aware of everything that your people, God, are facing. And, Lord, we pray right now in the name of the Lord. 
that God you would do the work that only you can do tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, for your abiding presence. God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. God, we stand on your word that says by your stripes we are healed. God, we stand on your word that says nothing is impossible with you. God, we stand on your word that says that you hear the cries of your people. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God, as we call on your name, I pray the touch of the Holy Ghost would rest on God, those that need a touch. God, those that have a lost in regards to this storm. God, those that need their power back on. We pray that you would move quickly and speedily through the hands of men to restore that power. In the name of the Lord God, would you now lay your hands on those that come forward and let's pray for them right now in the name of the Lord. God, we lay our hands on these prayer requests tonight. And God, we believe that you're going to do that work tonight, oh God. In the name of the Lord God of heaven and earth, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We thank you for your abiding help. In the name of the Lord, that's it. Pray for those that are in need. That's it. Pray for those that need a touch of God tonight. God, we worship you. God, we praise your matchless name. God, we praise your matchless name, oh God. We praise your matchless name, oh God, in the name of the Lord. God, we honor you tonight in the name of the Lord. God, we pray that you would reign in this house tonight. God, we pray that you would rain blessings. We pray that you would rain provisions. That's it. Just worship him. The Lord is here. Oh, there's a sweet presence of the Lord in this house right now. There's a sweet abiding presence of the Lord in this house right now. God, we receive tonight in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, 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 in the name of the Lord. We are rabbis in the name of Jesus. 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 Open yourself to the Lord tonight. I believe that as you give yourself to the Lord tonight in praise and worship and adoration that's due to his name, God, is open, open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing on you right now. Pour out a touch of the Holy Ghost on you right now and his abiding presence. God, we receive right now in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of heaven and earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of heaven and earth, we worship you, Lord. God, we pray, we pray, we believe, we pray, we believe. We pray, we believe, we pray and believe. God, not only do we pray and believe. We have great expectation that you're going to do that work. And God, we receive tonight. God, we receive tonight in power and demonstration. God, we receive tonight in the glory that's due to your name. Across 
this building, would you raise your hands right where you're at? And would you just begin to pray a blessing upon the people of God? Ask God to bless his people. Ask God to bless his people. Ask God to bless his people. Ask God to move for his people. Ask God to overshadow his people and pour out healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. The comforting power of the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of the Lord God of heaven and earth, Almighty God, we ask you to do it tonight, Lord, in the name of the Lord. God, we lay our hands on these requests tonight, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord God, 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 every miracle is ours, every provision is ours, oh God, every provision is ours, oh God. Provision is ours. God, we walk in that anointing tonight, God. We walk in that anointing tonight, God. Love the Lord, let's praise His name. Hallelujah, are you thankful for the rain? Hallelujah, are you thankful for the Holy Ghost rain? Hallelujah, we love you, Lord, we praise you, God, we magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 we will not fail to give you praise. We will not fail to magnify your name. Glory to the name of the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Howdy, are you thankful for that today? Howdy for his mercy, for his grace. Hallelujah. How when the devil tries to come against you to remind you of your past, how do you just remember that God forgave you of your sins? How do that God is full of mercy and grace? How do you don't have to accept that? How do when the devil comes against you to remind you of your past? You can just tell him to shut his mouth because it's under the blood. How do because the enemy will try his best? And if he can catch you on a down day, if he can catch you feeling depressed, if he can catch you feeling bad about yourself, he say, you remember what you used to do? Hallelujah. Sometimes you're going to have to get a fight within you and tell him to shut his mouth. Hallelujah. That you are a blood bought king of kings and the Lord of lords whose name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And this kind of goes along with what I feel like the Lord would have me to speak tonight. Hallelujah, if you have your Bibles, how do we go ahead and get into the word of the Lord? How do, how many appreciates our singers and musicians? How do we have anointed singing and anointed musicians? Hallelujah, I'm thankful for our church, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's good to see you out tonight. Hallelujah, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 37 and read verses 3 through 8. Then Genesis 41, 42 through 43. Then Genesis 42 and 6. We'll read a bunch of scripture and then we'll take off. Amen? I want to I set what I feel like God wants me to say tonight. Genesis 45 and 7. Then we'll finish with Philippians 1 and 6. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here we go. Genesis chapter 37, verse 3. Now Israel... Loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more 
Then all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and st also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brothers said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him, yet the more of his dreams and for his words. Genesis 41, 42, and the fulfillment came. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Genesis 42 and 6, and Joseph was the governor over the land, and it was, and it was, and he were, it was that sold to all the people of the land, and Joseph's brethren came, and here it is, and they bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth, and 45, 7, and Joseph was explaining to his brothers, and God sent me before you to preserve you posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he hath made me a father of Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. And this next scripture is going to tie it all together, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun. A good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. How did you? God showed Joseph his destiny at a young age to let him know of the work he wanted him wanted to do through him. God showed him his destiny despite his shortcomings and things that he needed to work on in his life. His destiny was to be the second, pharaoh, second to Pharaoh and save Egypt and his family. And tonight, God would have me to say to you, God has began a work in us for our destiny despite our shortcomings and things we need to work on. If we stay on the course, no matter what comes our way, God will complete what he has started in you and I. And, he, and we will reach our destiny, for God is the God of completion. Hallelujah. He's the God of completion. And that's my title tonight, the God of completion. Hallelujah. I want if we can have our wonderful pastor say a prayer tonight over the word of the Lord. Amen. How do you give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you see it? Hallelujah. We serve a God that's the God of completion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many's heard of Thomas Edison? Hallelujah. Most of us know this story. Hallelujah. But had he not been a man of faith, perseverance, and determination, we may still be working by gaslight, or at least it may have been many years before the first electric light was seen. It wouldn't have happened maybe during that time, but it would have happened at some point, I do believe, personally. It has been reported that Edison failed over 6,000 times before perfecting the electric light bulb. On one occasion, a young journalist challenged Edison, saying to him, Mr. Edison, why do you keep trying to make light by using electricity when you have failed so many times? Don't you know that gaslight are with us to stay? To this, Edison replied, young man, don't you realize that I have not failed? And most of us know this saying, but have successfully discovered 6,000 ways for the electricity and a light bulb to not work. Because Edison believed an electric light was possible, he refused to give up. He tried countless types of material in search for a filament that would work. 
He sent men to China, Japan, South America, Asia, Jamaica, and Burma to search for fibers to test his laboratory, all to no avail. On October 21st, 1879, after 13 months of repeated failures, Edison finally succeeded in finding a filament that would work. While experimenting, the thought came to him, why not try to carbonize cotton, cotton fiber? After going through two spores of cotton, he eventually perfected a strand only to break it while trying to place it in the glass tube. He refused to give up and persevered with his idea for two more days and nights without sleep. Finally, he succeeded in placing a carbonized thread into a vacuum sealed bulb, and it finally worked. Edison completed the work he had started. I am sure there were many times where he thought for sure he was on the verge of successfully completing the work, and then it failed. It took time to complete the work of the light bulb. And I read this story to say this tonight. If Edison could work on a light bulb and complete it, how much more can God work on us and complete the work in us? For he is the great God Almighty. He is the one that can fix things in a moment's time. He is the one that could take somebody from the lowest of valleys and snatch them from the lowest of valleys and put them up on the highest of mountains. How did Joseph is an example of that? Because he took him from the prison cell. He took him from the lowest place he could be and he put him on top. How do with the kingship was? How do we serve a God? How did that can fix you in a moment? How he could take care of it in a moment. How do he could bring you through it in a moment. How do for he is the God of completion. He is a God that can take care of it for you. Hallelujah. It would be 13 years before the completed work in Joseph would be final. Imagine that. You saw your dream. How do you saw it at the age of 17, I think it was. How do you saw it all those years ago back? How did it took 13 years for God to complete the work that he had began in Joseph? How did during his journey, he faced an attempt on his life by his brothers. He faced betrayal from his family. He was sold into slavery. He was lied on by his master's wife. He was thrown in the prison by no fault of his own. I am sure there were many times he began to doubt the dreams. He began to doubt how did that, that must have been something I ate the night before because there's no way in the world that God is going to make me a ruler over my brothers. He was now in the prison cell. How in the world can God take this man from a prison cell and raise him up to be a ruler over his brothers? Imagine that in this day and hour we live in now. How do you imagine that? Hallelujah, hallelujah. In a way, it's a scary thought. Hallelujah, but Joseph, uh, he had a purpose. Uh, hallelujah, he had a destiny. Uh, he had a work that God was doing in his life that he had no idea uh, what was go going on in his life. Uh, he had no idea, uh, hallelujah, that God was doing a work uh, during those 13 years of his life. Uh, he was preparing him. Uh, he was trying to complete the work in him. Uh, a little here uh, and a little there. He was making changes in his life. Uh, hallelujah, but jo Joseph, how did he never lost faith? He, when I say he never lost faith, he didn't turn his back on God. I'm sure his faith began weakened at some point. How did, especially when you're in the pit of the jail cell, when you're in prison, I'm sure his faith became shaken at some point. How did, but he never turned his back on God. He kept moving forward. I believe there are times that the voice of God would speak to him and recall to him those dreams that he had. And it gave him just a little bit of hope at times. And I believe the dream of the butler and the baker how it gave him some hope because those dreams came to pass. How when those dreams came to pass, I can only imagine that God brought back to memory how did those two dreams that he had when he was ruling over his brothers. And today, God has started a work. Some, it's recent. Some, it's been a while. 
Hallelujah. It has yet to come to pass yet. Hallelujah. You saw it. How do you saw that dream all those years ago? Hallelujah. And it has yet to come to pass. And I feel like the Lord would have me to rise up here tonight to remind you. Hallelujah. It's going to happen for you. Hallelujah. I don't know who it is that's doubting. I don't know who it is that's in the midst of a valley. I don't know who it is that's struggling right now. And you're beginning to think it's not going to happen. The Lord told me to tell you tonight how to keep moving forward. Keep trusting him. He's molding you right now. He's preparing to complete the work in you right now. And the story came to mind that probably most have heard the Brother Stone King told of how early on when he was just getting started, that he was praying that he saw himself preaching on a football field. And it would take, I think he said, 20 years, 20 some years. Before it came to pass, he, he completely forgot about it until he stepped onto the scene. Then God brought back the dream. And he fulfilled the dream. He completed because he is the God of completion. Hallelujah. There are different examples in the Bible. Hallelujah, there was Rahab. How many remembers Rahab? Hallelujah, she's the one that helped the uh, spies. Hallelujah, she had the house up on the wall. Hallelujah, she was a harlot. Hallelujah, she lived in the harlot's house. Hallelujah, and she said, I'm going to help these people. Hallelujah, she knew they had a destiny somewhere within her. Hallelujah, she knew that they served a great living God somewhere within her. Hallelujah, and she said, I'm going to help these people out. Hallelujah, and God began to working her at the end. Hallelujah. And he completed the work because she became part of the lineage of Jesus. I said all that to say this. Whatever your past is, whatever your sin used to be, whatever it is that sin stains have left on your life in times past, hallelujah, you don't have to listen to that anymore. Hallelujah, you don't have to say, I, am, I will never reach my destiny. I will never reach the place of completion that God has said for me. Hallelujah, because the examples, hallelujah, God has taken people from sinful lives. Hallelujah, he has transformed them and did a work in them. And who can forget Apostle Peter? Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And in the moment of truth, what does he do? He denies Hallelujah, Jesus. He denies and says, I don't know him in the moment of truth. Hallelujah. The Bible says, hallelujah, that at some point he ran off weeping. He ran off thinking. Hallelujah. I believe he thought when he was weeping that it's over. Hallelujah. I was supposed to be the rock that the church was built upon. Hallelujah. I was supposed to be the rock. Hallelujah. That the church was supposed to be built upon. And here I have denied him. And he ran off. And he had been walking with Jesus for some time. And the devil was lied to some in this house. And said, you've messed up. It's over. You've messed up. And you can't sleep at night. You've messed up. Hallelujah. Guilt and shame has rattled your brain. It's rattled your inner being. How do you say it? I'll never rise from this. How do we hear what Jesus did after he was resurrected? How did he call for his disciples? And he said, make sure you get Peter. Make sure you have him come too. Because it's Jesus. is a God who forgives. He's a God who forgives you. How do you may have messed up. How do you may have feel like it's over. How do you come and say, God, I'm sorry. How he will forgive you. He'll complete the work. And how about Pastor Paul? Who would have thought he had a destiny in the work of God? The man who killed Christians. The man Hallelujah, who tried to stop the work of God. The man who did all these horrible things to the church. Who could have imagined that God would have started a work in Apostle Paul? But God told somebody, he's going to do a great work for me. 
how do, he's going to do a great work for me. And the church was scared of him. I would be too. This man who kills Christians, this man who persecutes Christians, this man who tries to, seems like he has no fear of God. And he's, you, you try to invite him in church? Are you serious? What, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? You know how we think as humans? We get a little scared. But God had a purpose for Paul. And I know sometimes it's hard for us. We see people's past in our own eyes. And, and, and God is trying to tell us, I have a work for them. I have a work I want to complete in them. And he needs the body. How do he needs the church folks? How do he needs us? Hallelujah to be the mother church. Hallelujah to be the one. Hallelujah that will. Hallelujah to be compassionate. Hallelujah to be the one. Hallelujah that will be nurturing to them as they make the journey to a place. Hallelujah God can make the transformation in their lives. Hallelujah God needs us. Hallelujah to be the one to embrace him when nobody else will. Hallelujah God needs us to be the one. Uh, to provide the courage and word to them uh, if no one else will. Uh, but we are the bride of Christ uh, and we are the mother church uh, and God wants us to act accordingly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because Apostle Paul did a great work, he was known as the greatest missionary of all time. And I said all that to say this. If you're weary tonight, let us not become weary in doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we don't faint. Hallelujah. If you're weary today, how to somehow get a glimpse of what you saw all those years ago. If you're weary today and you're beginning your journey, how do God has began to work in you? If you keep the course, how if you keep the faith, if you keep moving forward, God will do a work and complete it. Along with the times of triumph, the times of rejoicing, the times of success and victory, there will be times of struggle. There will be times of failure. There will be times when it feels hopeless and feels like it is never going to happen. How do, there will be times your past will may come against you and try to bother you and stop you. The enemy will at times come against you and try to stop you. During these times, we need to recall how do all the things God has done for us previously. We need to remember when he gave us a purpose. We need to remember when he gave us a calling. We need to remember when he set us free. How do we understand how do that he could complete the work within us. Hallelujah, there is no devil in hell that could stop what God has started. There is no trial that could stop what God has started. There is no circumstance that could stop what God has started. It is up to you and I. Hallelujah, to keep moving forward. Hallelujah, because the tide will change. Hallelujah, you'll begin to see things like you've never seen them before. Just keep walking forward. And when you can't walk. I do crawl forward. When you can't crawl, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and watch what he would do. Watch what he will help you overcome when it looked like you wasn't coming out and you wasn't coming through it. How do when God stepped on to the seed and said, hey, I got this. How do I've got this and you're coming through it because I have a destiny on your life and I have a purpose on your life and I intend to complete it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against it. How do you could stand on the word of God? How did there be times in my own life I didn't know how, how did I was going to get past the situation? It seemed like everything was laying, sliding on me. It didn't seem like all of a sudden things didn't happen. As I thought, it was like God stopped the landslide from coming on me. He will raise up a standard against the enemy. 
he will. And the enemy, his playground is our mind. If he can keep you feeling hostage to your past. If he can keep you feeling hostage, hallelujah, to the voice he speaks to you and the words he speaks to you. Hallelujah, that's the only way, hallelujah, he can get you to turn away from your destiny. Hallelujah, if he can convince you it's not going to happen. If he can convince you that you are worthless. If he can convince you that you're terrible. If he can convince you, hallelujah, that's when it's going not to be so good. But God told me to tell you this, you're not worth us tonight. Because you are bought with the, by the blood of Jesus. You have his name upon your life. It doesn't matter who may say bad things about you. But know this, that your heavenly father, he loves you. Know this, that your heavenly father, he thinks a lot of you. Because he has a destiny for your life. Shake it off. Find somebody you trust in the church. Hallelujah, that may be abused by the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah, let them minister to you. Let them embrace you. Let them talk to you. How let them pray with you. Hallelujah, because God wants you to make it. And God, he goes before us. Deuteronomy 31 and 8, and the Lord he it is that doeth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Hallelujah. 130, Psalms 139, 5, thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. He knows the way that you take. When you feel like you're alone and you feel like uh, you're facing things all by yourself, uh, he knows the way that you take. Uh, hallelujah. He has set things before you. Uh, hallelujah. He has positioned things before you uh, because it is his desire for you uh, to succeed. Uh, hallelujah. He has made a way before you. Uh, hallelujah. And he is ready to fight for you. Uh, hallelujah. Just turn to him. He knows the way that we take. And I feel like God would have me to say, Hallelujah, if you're new today, if you're new to this, God loves you. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that God loves you. Don't ever forget that he thinks the world of you. Don't ever th forget hallelujah, that he sees you, uh, hallelujah, and he sees where you're heading to. Uh, hallelujah, he knows if you plus him is going to get there. Uh, and the devil knows that he, he could separate you and God. Uh, hallelujah, that the devil is going to try to make a mess of your life. But if you could stay with God, hallelujah, no matter how you're feeling, Hallelujah, when you're feeling depressed, hallelujah, don't turn from God. Hallelujah, when you're feeling anxiety, don't say I quit, hallelujah, and, and give up. Hallelujah, when you're feeling times of despair and hopelessness, hallelujah, don't quit. Don't go in the towel, hallelujah, because there are many, hallelujah, in Scripture, and there are many that's walking this life today, hallelujah, that have come through anxiety, that have come through depression, and they have come through times of despair and hurt and pain, hallelujah, just as Joseph did, hallelujah, and Joseph came through on the other side, and he came through on the other side, hallelujah, with fresh power, hallelujah, with authority, to save the nation of Egypt and save the nation and save his family. Hallelujah. Your family needs you to get through those tough times. There are people that's looking to you that you don't even know. Hallelujah. They need you to get through the depression. I know it's hard to get through depression and anxiety. If anybody knows it, I know it. Because I've gone through it. And there's times I have to fight through it 
God still. But I have to remember, I have a wife. I have two daughters. And I have other people who's watching. I've got to get through. God, I know you're with me. Each step of the way, I know you're with me. And even though there's times I feel like I'm alone. There's times I feel like I'm not going to make it. There's times I feel like, Lord, I don't know what to do. And the Lord just says, keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. And then all of a sudden, I feel the tide change. And I feel strength come. And I feel refreshing that I have been looking for. And if you keep walking, the refreshing of the Holy Ghost will come and help you in your moment of need. God wants to complete the work. It's time, hallelujah, how did we get mad at the devil? It's time, and there's times it's not the devil, it's just old flesh. Because there's times, I, you see, people get prayed for and they go home and they still feel depressed. I'm sorry. I believe, especially this church, you get prayed for, if there's any devils, it, they depart. But sometimes this old flesh just doesn't feel good sometimes. Hallelujah, we need during those times just to keep moving forward. Not say, God, if you don't change this, I'm not going to continue on. That's not what we need to do. Because this old flesh, it's going to break down. Hallelujah, this old flesh, hallelujah, it, it's moody sometimes. It, it, it can, if you're not careful, the wind can make you go over here in your moods and go over here. In your moods. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, will help us to have self control. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will help us sometimes just to move along. Hallelujah. Sometimes we may be walking slow and just moving forward slowly. Hallelujah. Because, hallelujah, we want to make it. <coughs> and I'm coming to a close. If we could stand. The God of completion. He will complete it. <coughs> he will finish it. There was a, a young woman named Wilma Rudolph. Most of us probably have heard of her. As a young child, she was paralyzed by polio and contracted both scarlet fever and double pneumonia. Many doctors felt she would never walk again. Yet she always believed otherwise. By the time she was 12, she had regained her ability to walk and took up athletics. Eight years later, she was an Olympic champion. Rudolph became the first American woman to win three gold medals in track and field at the same Olympic Games. Her performance also earned her the title of the fastest woman in the world. I'm talking about if she could do that. Imagine what God could do for you. Some of you, God has already gave you the dream. And you saw it. And it has yet to come to the pass. It has yet to be completed. Keep moving forward. Keep pursuing. No matter what comes your way, don't believe anything else. How do you don't believe that you're not going to make it to that destiny? Refuse to believe it. Refuse to believe it. And say, I will believe. I will move forward. I will reach my destination. I will reach the place. And God will show once again that he is the God of completion. Hallelujah. He is the God of completion. Hallelujah. If he said he would do it, he will. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. In his time. 
how it took Joseph 13 years to reach that place. I don't know how long it's going to take for you. Hallelujah, but I know it's going to happen. Hallelujah, determine tonight, determine this day. I will not, I will not stop. I will not turn around. I will keep moving forward no matter what I'm going through. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. How do we we can raise our hands tonight and say, Lord, I love you no matter what. God, I'm going to move forward no matter what I'm going through. No matter how I'm feeling. No matter what comes my way. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. God, we believe for Yes, we do, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. We'll see a miracle. Yes, we're going to see it. God, we believe. We're going to see it. God, we believe for it. Move the air, move above. It's going to move it. Break the unbreakable. It's going to break the unbreakable. God, we believe. It's going to do the impossible. God, we believe for it. We've got to believe for it. Until it comes to pass. Until the completion happens. We've got to believe. God, we believe. Oh, yes, God, we believe. God, we believe we for it. Jesus. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. Hallelujah, these altars are open if you would like to come. There is strength waiting for you here. There is strength waiting for you. Hallelujah, if you come today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let God rekindle the fire. Let God we show you what's coming. Hallelujah, let God show you. Hallelujah again. Hallelujah, so it can be fresh on your mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you come today, I believe God's going to help you. Hallelujah, give you the strength. Hallelujah, to get through where you're at right now. What we believe for, Jesus. Break the unbreakable. He's going to break the unbreakable. How do we believe for it, Jesus? God, we believe for it from the impossible. Hallelujah, let the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. Oh, we believe. We God, believe. We believe. I feel like God wants me to have you do this right now. I want we can raise our hands all across this house. Hallelujah. Let the enemy hear you say, I believe. I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Say, I believe it. Hallelujah. I'm going to reach that place. Hallelujah. I believe it. Hallelujah. Say it. Say, I believe it. I'm coming for it. I'm going to reach the place of completion. And God's going to complete the work. God's going to complete the work. I it's going to completely bring you out of it. It's going to completely bring you from your past. It's going to deliver you from all those things. I believe. I'm going to go until it does. I believe. Oh, yes, Jesus. You said it. You said it. Let the enemy hear you say it. I'm 
difficult things to do is to walk patiently and letting God just to complete that work. We want to see God's hand revealed quickly. We want to see God do that work on our life quickly. We want to see the completed work just like that. But God positions. God moves to His purpose, His plan, His will for our as we just continue to submit our life to God. The Bible says the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered of the Lord. He's directing your steps. And if you'll continue to submit yourself to God and live for God to the fullest and being sensitive to the Spirit of God in your life and the voice of God, you're going to be where God would have you to be and God's going to complete the work in your life. How many believes that tonight? Amen. How many has that heart, mind, and spirit? God, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. My, my, my. Thank you, Elder Green. Didn't he do a marvelous job tonight? Mightily anointed of the Lord. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, musicians and singers. Amen. How many feels refreshed by being in the house of the Lord tonight? Do you feel refreshed? Amen. There's nothing like being in the house of the Lord on Wednesday. You can be seated. There's nothing like being in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Amen. Quite a few folks aren't able to be here tonight due to the fact of that which we mentioned to you earlier. But amen. It really takes an effort. Everyone shout an effort. It takes an effort to be in the house of God, and God blesses us to make that effort on a Wednesday evening. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness, your mindfulness of the things of God and the ways of God. Amen. Has that saint of God blessed you tonight by being in the house of the Lord? Amen. Let them know with a hand clap that they blessed you by coming and worshiping together. And so very, very thankful. So very, very thankful. Amen. Didn't we have a marvelous time here this past Sunday morning, Easter Sunday? Man, the Lord blessed us in a wonderful way. Had a great touch of God. So very, very thankful. Amen. For all of you that worked so hard. Amen. And getting those in the house of the Lord. Many were touched and blessed. I received text messages all week long and saying, Pastor, I was blessed and I was strengthened in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I had a glorious day and they said, my week has been glorious. I believe that we can walk in a glorious week every week. How many believe that? Amen, 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 amen. I believe that with everything in us. And so I encourage you, be in the house of the Lord this coming Sunday morning. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'll see you Sunday morning in Jesus' name. Tell them you don't want to miss it. The Lord's going to be with us. The hand of the Lord's going to rest upon us. Sunday morning at 10 a.m., 11 o'clock evangelistic service. I have a word for you from the Lord Sunday morning. And I know the Lord is going to bless and minister to us. Amen. Don't forget this coming Friday evening at 730 is Section 5 Fellowship Rally in East Wind. They're in Chesapeake, and you'll not want to miss that. Amen. Have a glorious time this coming Friday evening at 730. And I know many of our youth is planning on attending, and so it's open to all of the people of God. And so we'd love for you to be there 730, and you'll not want to miss that service. Amen. And then also... Amen. Recovery session on Tuesday, April the 9th at 6.30. And then Pillars of Faith Fellowship. I want to make sure that you're well aware of this. Pillars of Faith Fellowship on Thursday, April the 11th. Amen. Is that correct time? 11.30? Is it right? 11.30. Amen. In the morning, going into the afternoon. You're going to have a wonderful time because you're going to be going to Golden Corral. 
Amen. Leather like going to Golden Corral. Amen. And so that's 1130. And so if you're part of the Pillars of Faith group, amen, 65 and older, make sure you see Brother and Sister Sites. Let them know you're going to attend. And what a wonderful time of fellowship. You know, it's one thing gathering together in the house of the Lord and worshiping the Lord and worshiping God with your brother and sister in the Lord. But it's another thing outside the church to have great fellowship and and get to fellowship one with another and encourage one another and strengthen one another. Amen. So I want to encourage you, be a part of that, and you'll have a blessed, blessed time. Please let them know if you're planning on attending. And then also Vertical Bible Study, ages 19 to 36, on Friday, April the 12th. That is next Friday from 7 to 9. Amen. We're glad to tell you that our prayer schedule is completed. Amen. For Friday, and let's give God praise for that. We thank the Lord. Amen. Amen for that. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, turn to somebody and tell them you love them, tell them you appreciate them, tell them you're thankful for them in every way, shape, or form. Amen. Let them know they're a blessing. Amen. 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 We're so thankful. Amen. That Sister Tina Solomon is here. I walked across this front this evening during worship, and I, Sister Tina, I said, you made my week seeing you twice this week. Amen. Isn't she a blessing? Aren't you glad that she's here? Aren't you thankful? Amen. And she told me, she said, Pastor, I'm not missing. I'm glad to hear that. Let's give her a great hand clap. I love you. Amen. We're so very, very thankful you blessed us. And I know the Lord's going to strengthen us. Amen. 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 Brother Klein, we're so glad you're here. Amen. You and Brother Nick. I know you didn't come see me, and I understand that. I know Brother Nick. But I'm glad you're here. This is a great man of God. Amen. He works out of Brother Cunningham's church and is mightily used in ministering to children. Brother Klein, I want you to greet this congregation for just a moment, and I want you to pray a blessing. Would you pray a blessing upon this congregation, if you would? Would you come? Let's give the man of God a great big hand of appreciation and let him know you're thankful that he's here tonight. Amen. He's a good God. Uh, a couple nights ago, I was uh, leaving. I uh, was in another city. I was in Virginia or Pennsylvania and talking to some other pastors and it, just church building and classes and what God is doing, and God kept laying on my mind, I'm not done yet, I'm not done yet, and uh, and I come in and just try to sneak in and try to get some word every now and then, and uh, God reminded me again that he's the God of completion, do you believe that, do you believe that, amen, I believe if God ever spoke anything to you, if God ever spoke anything to you, tonight he's breathing life back into that miracle and that promise. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these precious saints. God, I ask that you'll keep your hand up on us. And God, as you breathe life into miracles and promises and visions and dreams, God, you are the God of completion. God, let this word continue to be in our heart. Let it be in our spirit. God, you're not done with this city. You're not done with this church. You're not done with these saints. God, we love you, Lord Jesus. God, we know that you're going to complete it. In Jesus' name we pray.